Hey, welcome in, peeps. Dave Salantano here with our Wednesday night guitar trick sponsored lesson. Hello, Dave. Hello, Peter. And whoever else is showing up, good day. All right, Peter. Good, good job. Today we're working on week three of three for the chicken picking. And this is going to be the fun one. It's going to be the hardest one, too. But it's going to be a culmination of what we worked on on week one and two. Week one, we were kind of doing the chicken picking lick like uh, Joe Walsh does. But he does in Funk 49. Okay, that lick, that kind of sound, or like Ace Freely would have done in some of the early Kiss albums. That kind of sound, that's what we learned on week one, that kind of chicken picking sound. So we're not going to go over that. If you want, you can find week one of three for chicken picking on YouTube and check it out there and you get the curriculum there. Last week, we were also working on uh, a little different style of chicken picking with doing intervals of six. That kind of sound. Very kind of country sounding. And then we were also doing this. Kind of that kind of stuff. Where we're doing a three note pick real quick on the third string and then picking the first string, doing a string skip and grabbing that with your middle or your ring finger. Okay. And that interval we talked about last week was the interval of a six, a major six or a minor six. So we're going to kind of take all those concepts and I got some really cool stuff for week three here. So while everyone's rolling in here, hello, Steve and King 50, Mr. That's uh, Bill over there from Northern Nevada. Hey, Hey. Um, and then, uh, Bill, we got a lesson Friday, too. Cool. Looking forward to that with you. Barry, all right. Cool. And then Richard, hello, hello. A bang. Cool. First in February. Yeah, it's not the first of February yet here in uh, the west side of America, the west coast area, Arizona. We're still January 31st. Where are you at, a bang? That's, I'm curious about that. And then uh, Craig, all right, cool. A couple couple of my favorite students there and Dave Carlton also another one of the students Alex cool Jim right on Kelly all right some new looks like some new names new faces uh, Andre right on all right rock on brother thank you thank you um so I posted up at the top of the chat window three guitar tricks chicken picking style lessons uh that are done by three different instructors on the site they're all three of the guys are really good and know what they're doing but if you're a guitar tricks member you got to sign into your guitar tricks account then you can click those links if you try to click them now and you're not logged in it won't it'll won't take you there it'll take you to like a, a sign up page on guitar tricks and if you're not a guitar tricks member think about joining them because we got a ton of videos, tutorial videos, and a bunch of songs and stylistic lessons, stylistic being kind of like what I'm doing tonight. I'm not teaching any song, but we're learning the chicken picking style. And this is one of my long series of lead guitar techniques we've been working on. Uh, we were working on uh, string skipping, hybrid picking. Uh, the chicken picking kind of falls into that hybrid picking zone. Um, but it's getting this sounds a little more bluegrass and country what we're doing here, but certainly sounds good in rock because like I demonstrated Joe Walsh and Ace Frehley, Zach Wild in, uh, you know, Ozzy Osbourne's band and his solo project, Black Label Society, does a lot of chicken picking in that. And heck, he doesn't sound country to me. He's very heavy metal sounding. So just because a style might be associated with a certain or just because a technique might be associated with a certain style. Um, don't be afraid to try it in other styles. You know, that it might sound cool in the blues. Might be cool. You know, a lot of rock players play blues licks in their rock songs. Okay. So you can do that. Same with two-hand tapping. I mean, Stanley Jordan does two-hand taps, and he's a jazz player. 
it sounds definitely jazz, but then you got guys like Ed Van Halen who did it quite a bit and sounds, he makes it sound great in rock context. Okay. So these techniques we're working on, they're not just for one particular genre or style, but it transcends that it goes above. You should try to use them in different styles of music too, whatever you're into. Okay. But anyway, back to the ranch here with uh, the guitar tricks. If you're not a member, you ought to check them out because we got a lot of lessons for super beginners, you know, people that are novice guitar players all the way up, you know, how to tune your guitar and how to play some simple one, two finger chords all the way up to super advanced lessons, like some advanced Bach classical music. We got some great instructor, uh, Christopher Schlegel does some uh, really good classical finger style lessons. We also have like these links I posted for the chicken picking. They're pretty advanced. They're like five and four and I think three pick ratings, which means they're pretty high up there. If you're just starting out on guitar, you might not want to start with something that's that advanced because uh, you don't want to get frustrated. You know, start with the basics, get them down first. Okay. Hello, Kelly from boss, uh, Kelly Boston from Florida, right on. And Zane is here too. Cool. Cool. All right. So anyway, and Guitar Tricks has a uh, money back guarantee. And I, I don't know what deals they got going on right now because um, they're but they often have deals going. So check them out. And if you're interested, you don't really have anything to lose by signing up, trying uh, some of their different tiers they have for uh, different membership levels. OK. All right. David Carlton saying Richie Kotzen, of course. Yeah, he he plays with his fingers. He finger picks kind of like uh, who's that new guy we're seeing a lot on YouTube. Matthew Mateo, I think is his name, possibly. He's amazing. He's scary good. But Mark Knopfler and Dire Straits also, you know, he plays everything with his fingers like Sultan's a swing money for nothing. OK, those don't sound country or uh you know, finger style, but he's playing with his fingers. He's plucking with his fingers, just like Richie Kotzen. I know he used to be a shredder playing with a pick, but I did read David that he, uh, that Richie Kotzen um, started not using the pick. All right. Not country, but using all fingers now. Yeah. I can't think of any country players using all fingers with electric guitars. Any come to mind? Um, not off the top of my head, David, but uh, maybe one of the, people watching might be able to pipe in, you know, because having more people's minds here is a lot more powerful than just mine. All right. Example one is fun with just fingers. Yeah. You could do it with just your fingers too, Dave, for sure. For sure. Okay. So enough of that. Check out if you want to go a little deeper than what we're doing in this three, these three weeks of our uh, lead guitar series on chicken picking check out those three guitar tricks links. And just so you know, I'll remind everyone too, at the end of the class, um, after this is three of three is over tonight, next week, we're going to start one of two weeks on sweep picking. So I got two weeks in a row of that. And then coming down the pipeline soon after that, we're going to work on two hand tapping for three weeks, starting with some real basic one finger tapping to two fingers and multiple fingers, getting all four fingers involved. Okay. And if you go on my YouTube channel, everybody, or go to my website, DaveSolentano.com, or just search my name on YouTube, uh, my YouTube channel, I don't give lessons on there. I reserve that for my one-on-one -on -one students and guitar tricks, but I have a ton of videos, performances of me doing Spanish guitar playing, blues playing, slide guitar playing, a lot of heavy metal stuff. Um, a lot of two hand tapping stuff, classical style, like doing box, toccata and fugue. Um, check that out. OK, some sweet picking stuff, too. Um, you can see a variety of different things that I can teach and love playing. OK, so anyway, let's jump into what we're doing here tonight, folks. Enough of me babbling and talking. So like I said, week three of three today is a culmination of the techniques we worked on the last two weeks. OK, so let me go ahead and we're going to play just example one. It looks and sounds like this slowly. Repeat. OK, 
definitely sounds kind of country, kind of bluegrass, right? This would sound great on a Strat or a Telecaster, probably even a little more appropriate on a maybe a Telecaster. It also sounds great on a steel string acoustic like that Martin I got sitting right there. <laughs> Okay, what do we got going on there? Well, first off, the first two notes, that's one of our major six intervals we talked about last week. All right. We got the string skip going there. We've got fourth fret on the third string. That's your first note. Slide up to that with your middle finger. Grab the three on the first string with your index finger and then quickly stop it. Okay, and make that last note snappy, like staccato style. Okay, then the next couple ideas are on the second string, doing the chicken picking we talked about on week one, that like Jimmy Page does and Joe Walsh and Ace Frehley, I talked about this sound. So we're gra grabbing the sixth fret, second string with the pinky. And then the first note is a downstroke, but you notice that in the tablature, it's an X. So like we talked about on week one of this three-week series, what you got to do is put your middle finger on the second string, touch it with the flesh tip of your finger, and then put your pick above the second string on it. So when you pick downstroke, it mutes. It sounds like a mute click, right? Because my finger's on it. And then the next note, the six, is me plucking that second string six fret with my middle finger. So I'm getting this sound. Okay. That's how those guitar players I mentioned a minute ago uh, are getting their clucking sound. Okay. And then we do the same thing with the third fret second string. Put your index finger there. Okay. Just hold it down. And all the muting is coming from your right hand. Your pick's above the string. Your middle finger's below it, and they're both touching it. You're pinching the string, all right? So I go downstroke with the pick. You get the click sound because my middle finger's on it, and then I grab it, and I pluck it up. Okay, so I got this sound. Okay, so we start with the sliding up with the interval of a major, I mean, a minor six. And then... And then the last part of that first bar, we're going to roll the finger over to the third string, third fret with your index. Pick that with a downstroke. And you look at, you see it's got a little string bending arrow coming off of the three. And then above the arrowhead, it's got a one quarter, a fourth. That means you're going to bend the note about a quarter step, which is not that far. A half step in guitar would be to the very next fret. <laughs> Yeah, we don't want to go that far. Okay, we only want to go a quarter. So that's the note that's between that note and that note. See, it's actually, it's out of tune. It's, technically, it's out of tune. But in this, playing this type of style in the blues and some of the country licks with this, even some rock, that slightly out of tune sound you would think would sound bad in classical music. It, it typically would, but we've heard it so much in rock country and blues that we accept it as part of the genre. So it actually sounds neat for that sound. So just bend it a little bit and I'm tugging the note downwards. And then I'm grabbing string four at the fifth fret with my third finger. Okay. So there's like three elements, three sections to bar one. We got this. Okay, then the chicken picking. Okay, and I anticipate having to go to that third string after that. So when I put my index finger on that third fret second string, I don't really play with the tip of my finger because then I pin myself in a corner and I would have to jump back. I'd have to jump it over to the next string, which is not a good way to get from one string to another when you're on the same uh, fret with the same finger, okay? That's if you have to be on the same fret with the same finger on a neighboring string, it's better to anticipate that and sort of get your finger either already barred on both of them or set it in just a way. So when I roll it over, I never come off the string. See, my index finger just kind of does a little roll. 
So when I'm on the second string, I'm touching the third, but I'm not pressing the third. I'm not barring it like this. Because then if you're barred, what happens is it makes it hard to do the little quarter step bend because you're also holding the second string. It creates a little too much friction. All right. Okay. So the second part is the chicken picking. And then we roll quickly over to the third string. And just give it a little bend, kind of milk it, kind of slowly. And then string four at the fifth fret. Okay, so part one, part two, and then part three. All together. Okay, pretty neat little lick right there. Okay. And then we're going to go bar two. This is very cool, kind of bluegrass, kind of country sound in here. A lot of hammer-ons and pull-offs. Uh, and we're going to start with the first beat is open fifth string, hammer to the second with the index. And then grab the third string with your middle finger open and just pluck it. Okay, then we jump over to the third string. You're going to do a three-note pull-off. Kind of like Jimmy Page would do in Over the Hills and Far Away or David Gilmore does in uh, Wish You Were Here. And then we go to the fourth string and then do the same idea, but you're using frets three, two, and open. So that's going. So those are two triplets, all right? Try to play all six notes evenly, and it's a downstroke on each string. Down, pull off, pull off. And then down, pull off, pull off. Try to make all six notes sound connected like this. Not. Okay. You want to be able to take it slow and get them even. Okay. And a good way to learn pieces like this, folks, is in pieces. All right. Learn ideas. When you're learning a song, don't keep trying to play through the whole part. Work on just little chunks at a time and get each chunk sounding real good, each piece, and then try to put them together. I noticed that with a, a lot of students, not everyone, but several students, when I give them music to work on or I see them working on a song on guitar tricks, they keep trying to play through like the whole intro of the song. And they've got all kinds of spots in there where they're stopping, they're playing a wrong note or their timing's off. And, but they just keep playing it the same way, incorrectly, all the time. What we need to do is just work on little parts and try to listen to what you're playing, too, and say, does it sound like what the song's supposed to? And take your time and get it right. Work on the little chunks. This whole guitar thing, it's not necessarily the easiest instrument in the world to play, but if you be patient, okay, Playing an instrument is going to teach you patience because all the good musicians, all my friends that are musicians, the good ones are, they know about patience. They know they need to play something a hundred times before they get it solid and locked down, sounding perfect. All right. You might have to do it more than a hundred times. Maybe you only have to do it 20 or 30 times. But the point is you're going to need to do stuff over and over again, little bits, little bits until you get it. Okay, and that's part of playing the game. You know, I'm doing my Spanish guitar play, and I'm doing a gig uh, this Saturday. I'm going to play a few songs with my buddy, and then next Friday we're playing a gig for an hour long, and I'm practicing my fingers off on the tunes I got to work on, and I'm doing just little sections. And then anytime I notice that I'm playing a part that's a little sloppy, stop and just work on it. And I do it over and over again, either with the backing track or the metronome. And I do it like 10 or 20 times until it starts to sound locked in and it starts to sound good. Okay. And if it doesn't, just means I got to practice it more. Okay. Let me just check out the comments coming in here. David's saying, could you please play example one with a metronome? I tend to screw up the timing when multiple pull-offs are involved. You got it, Dave. And Troy saying, is there a link to week one? Yeah, Troy, go back on YouTube 
and search, you know, on Guitar Tricks YouTube channel, my chicken pick in week one of three, uh, you open up the text box, expand the text box underneath the video, and you can watch the whole hour long video. You expand the text box, though, you'll see a link, a blue URL link, to get the curriculum here, something to that effect. That's where the tabs are for week one. In, you can also go and find chicken pick in week two of three, did last week, and you can uh, print that out too. Okay. And Grizzly Mountain Man saying, uh, I know that's how it goes for me over and over again. Exactly. Yeah. I'm preaching to the choir, right? Grizzly Mountain Man, you know, you know. All the good players, like I said, all my buddies, bandmates, and other musician friends of mine that are good players, they know they got to do stuff over and over again. Trust me. I mean, good players just don't pick up the instrument and play great right off the top. We even need to warm up. You know, when I'm going to do these Spanish guitar gigs coming up, I'm going to need to sit backstage and warm up for 10 or 15 minutes. All right. I can't just pick up that classical guitar and just play really good. It's going to take a few minutes, like warming your car up. All right. Just get all the fingers, the muscles loosened up. OK, that's normal. You know, I mean, how many times do we see like Eddie Van Halen backstage warming up before he goes on stage? He wants to be ready and fired up when he hits the stage. He doesn't want to sound like a clunker. Right. He sounded great because he was warmed up backstage for a half hour or whatever is ritual. We all have our little rituals we we do before we do a gig. OK, so, Dave, you need that example one with the metronome. Good point. Let's do this. Actually, let me get it going here. Sorry. Okay, how about this, Dave? I will play it a few times for you at different tempos, all right? Now, I said the tempo would be 120 for all these up there, but let me start at half that speed at 60. So there's 60. One, two, three, four, and... Sixty, Dave. Now let me just go up to 120 just to save time because I got a lot here I want to cover with everybody. Even though we just got one page, I want to make sure to have time to go over it. Okay, so here's 120 tempo. One, two, and three, and four, and wow, that's kind of quick. One, two, three, four. A little bit messy because I'm not warmed up with it. So let's cut it back. Let's do half. Let's split it. Let's go to 90, Dave. Because, again, if it doesn't sound good and it's sloppy, don't keep playing it fast if you're messing up, okay, like I was kind of just doing. All right? Let's go to 90. Three, four. One and two and three and four and. One more time. Two, three, four. See, it's not a way cleaner. Actually, I think 90, folks, would be a good goal to go for. 120 is pretty booking fast. Um, so I would shoot for 90 first. Start out slow at like 50 or 60. Get it down, Dave. Now, keep in mind, Dave, those triplets are in the second bar, those two sets of triplets. Those are 16th note triplets. That means we need to play all six notes in one beat on the second beat. So it's one, two, Diddly diddly. So you want to play the first triplet on the first half of beat two and the second triplet on the second half of beat two. So it's two and okay. So there you go. And I'll I'll do these with the other licks too. So that's that lick. Let's go ahead and move on. Example one, we're kind of got that down. Okay, example two, all right. Now we're going to do chicken picking and some string bending. All right. It's going to give it a more of a country bluegrass sound or another country bluegrass sound. Okay. The first bar is pretty much exactly what, in fact, not pretty much. 
It's exactly what we did in the first bar of example one. Except we're going to move it five frets higher. Now this is going to be implying the C7 sound. The first one implied G7. Ay, ay, ay. See, a lot of those notes were in the G7 chord. That's why it sounds like G7, even though I'm not playing the chord. Okay, we'll move it up five frets. Now it's going to sound like C7. Okay, and then the second bar, I don't need to go over the first bar because it's the same techniques. We're just five frets higher. Okay, then the second bar of example two is back here at the fifth fret and seventh fret. Since this is over a C major or a C7 chord, to get that country sound, what we're going to do is play a C major pentatonic lick, which, aka folks, it's, it's going to be out of the A minor pentatonic pattern, which A minor is the relative minor to C major. So like a lot of Southern rock bands and uh, country bands, when they play in a major key, they just move the pentatonic scale down three frets from the root of the key they're in. So typically, like if we're doing blues in C major or C7, I would play C minor pentatonic. Okay, but if I want to sound a little more country, I would move the minor pentatonic down three frets so my pinky's on the root. See, it has a country sound when you move it down three frets and then make sure you keep the root notes the same as what the mate, you know, what the original key is that you move down three frets from. Okay. So even though we're playing A minor pentatonic in the fifth fret. We're going to focus on the, not the A's, but the C notes. See right there in the first beat of it, the second bar. Go right to the C note there. Then bend the seventh fret up a whole step. That goes to the major third of the C chord. Okay, so let me kind of define what that tablature looks like. We're going to bend the seven up a whole step. And you actually want to hold it, even though I, I should have added this in the tablature, but we want to hold that bend for the rest of the bends. Okay, so watch. I don't let it down. I keep it up there. Then I play the eight on the first string with my pinky. Okay. Then I play the seven that's bent again on the third string. See how it has a vertical arrow coming up off it? That means you don't rebend it. You keep it bent up a whole step. And then you got your uh, first string on the eighth fret. Uh, my neighbor likes to cross the street. They like to watch uh, my YouTube videos, and I think they can see me uh, through the window right there. They sent me a text. Marianne and Rocky, knock it off. All right, that's that's our cool neighbors across the street. All right, anyway, back here to the ranch, folks. We've got that seven bend a whole step. Hold it, play eight on the first string. Play the seven on the third that's still bent. Now you, you move your pinky over to the second string, eighth fret. Play that. Now you pick the last seven that's bent. It's still bent. Then you let it down. See, after it's got the vertical bend at the end, and then you let it down. See that little descending arrow? That means you, while it's still bent, pick it. Let it down. Kind of sounds like a kitty meow. And then we end on the C note because that's our chord we're playing over, the root note. So you could pick all those notes with your pick, if you like. Or you could choose to pick the eights with your fingers, so you get a little more snappy sound. Get a clean of, I got a little overdrive on here, but if I played it with a super clean sound, it would actually sound kind of cool to let those eights ring.
maybe bar them with your pinky so you don't even have to move your finger. Like, so we got. Try it again. Okay, let's try that with the metronome for everybody here. We'll do that at 60, real slow. Two, three, and four, and. Okay, we'll try it a little faster at 90. Okay, here we go. One, two, and three, and four, and. One time. Four. One more time. Two, three, four. So I'm going to actually show, we're going to put these pieces of the puzzle, example one, two, and three, we're going to put these all together and make a little tune out of it. So remember I was saying how to learn a song? You kind of learn it in pieces, all right? So I didn't want to chart out the whole thing. I'd rather give each piece as a separate example, and then I'm going to show you in a few minutes after we do example three, I'm going to show you the order to put example one, two, and three in to make a little cool little tune out of it, okay? All right, so what do we got going here? Second Chance Band from Connecticut. Hey, Marianne, cool to see you here, all right? It's been a little while. And David's saying, will example one work on G2? Well, yeah, it will work on G, David, because it example one is over the G7. So are you talking about just a regular G chord? Absolutely, it'll work over at, at G major. Heck yeah, absolutely, yep. And an example two over the C, or must they be seventh chords? I'm not seeing the conflicting note. You're right, Dave. Well, you, you could play it just over a C chord too. Yeah, so that sounds, uh, yeah, sounds good that way, Dave. So you'd be implying the seventh, Dave, even if the you were playing it over just a regular G chord, you're, you're implying the seventh is in there, which doesn't sound bad, all right, because you're playing the, the flat seven, a G is the F note. you got it right there. Right there. And then on this lick, we're playing the F again right there. And then the same with the C7. Even if you don't play that over C7, but play it over C, there's the B flat. That's the flat seven of the C chord. Okay, you're implying it right there. Okay. Let's see if we got the flat seven in here. actually not a flat seven in that last lick that's all pretty much uh roots thirds and fifths with the six right there sixes also sound pretty cool too okay uh marianne second chance band saying i don't know anyone who does chicken picking better than you dave <laughs> well the last few weeks on week one and two i was mentioning uh Ace Fraley and Kiss, or early Kiss, you hear him do chicken picking. That's more, not so country sounding though. Obviously, Kiss does not sound country, but he would do. Or I think in the song Firehouse, he does a little bit of chicken picking like that. Um, Joe Walsh, Funk 49. Right here. And then Jimmy Page and Heartbreaker. Uh, no, Live and Lovin'. You know the soul? Yeah, 
There we go. Then he does this little chromatic chicken picking lick. Something like that. It's not exact, but I know he climbs up chromatically doing the chicken picking. But uh, those are three good examples, uh, Marianne, that uh, are uh, f good examples of that kind of chicken picking stuff. But I appreciate the kudos, the compliment. Thank you. And then uh, let's move on to example three here because I don't want to talk the whole lesson away. Um, example three says chicken picking with a turnaround. All right, so we're going to do this over a D7 for bar one and then a C7 for bar two. So we're going to go from D7 to a C7. Or as uh, bar chords, just move it back a whole step. Okay, the D7, we're going to go. That's our D7. So notice that I'm establishing the chord right away. Sliding up, doing that minor six interval, which is the, it's the C, uh, I'm sorry, the F sharp. It's the major third of the D7. And then the root. Chord tones right away. We're letting the listener know, hey, we're playing a D7 chord here. Or a D chord. And then I'm going to move up. 12th fret first string and do a little chromatic ascending lick from 12 to 13 to 14 using the chicken picking, the chicken clucking. And then back. So I go. And then the last note I end on, it's like a little ascending chromatic line. Usually when you do chromatics, you want to start and end on good notes. All right. Well, the last note I play there is the F sharp. That's the major third of D. And then I go back to the root. Okay. And then for the C7, we're going to slide up to the 12 on the third and 12 on the first. That's a major six interval. Okay. And that's the G notes, the fifth of the C chord. The E notes, the major third of the C chord. So right away, I'm letting the listener know, hey, we're playing a C chord now or C7. Okay. Then I'm going to do a little chromatic descending lick from 11 to 10. And then grab 11 on the second string, bend it. What does that say? A quarter step? So remember on those quarter step bends, don't bend them too far. In fact, the lesser you bend it, Probably the better. All right. And then I end on the C note, eighth fret first string. That's the root of the chord we're playing. So the D7, C. changes right there so if you're clever enough people take your time figure out get you know get familiar with your chord tones and where they are on your fretboard and you can write little licks and melodies that sound great by themselves you don't need to have a backing track and a listener and you can totally hear the chords even though no one's playing the chords because you're implying them by what you're playing Okay, you're focusing a lot on those roots, thirds, fifths, sevenths, okay, etc. So get a pencil and paper. I'm going to give you an order to play example one, two, and three. And this is going to be a fun little mini tune. Instead of three separate examples that sound kind of cool by themselves, let's, let's play some music with it. Okay, let's make a little song out of it. And of course, I will play them slow at 60 and then a little quicker at 90. So here's example three at 60. Two, three, and four, and. OK, 
Okay, we won't repeat that one. We're just going to play that once. Okay, and let's go to 90. Here we go. A one and two and three and four and... Cool. Okay, let's stop there. I'm going to cue it back for putting this all together. Okay, so here we go. Got your pencil and paper if you're interested with uh, making a little mini tune out of example one, two, and three. Okay, what we're going to do is play example one two times. Okay, then we're going to play example two one time. Even though I got repeat signs there, it, play example two just one time. Then we're going to go back to example one and play that one time, disregard the repeat signs, okay? So, so far, we're going to have example one twice, example two once, and then back to example one once. Then we're going to do example three, just one time through, and then we're going to go back to example one, one time. Okay, so one more review, and then I'll play it all together for you. We're going to go example one, two times, example two, one time, example one, one time, example three, one time, and example one, one time. Okay, so check this out with no metronome. Okay, we got this. Again. Example two. basically following a 12 bar form. All right. So we got, if you think about the 12 bar blues, we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Yeah, we got, except we don't end on a five chord at the end. We just play the G seven chord for uh, the very last bar. Okay. Now let's try it with the uh, 60 beats a minute. All right. Metronome. Three and four and. to you one more time. Cleaner. One, two, three, four. There 
you go, people. All right, let me get that back. Okay, cool. All right, now we got a few minutes left, 15 minutes. Let's go ahead and check out example four, okay? And then we're done. Okay, so example four kind of talks a little bit about what we did last week where we're doing a quick little chromatic three note in a row lick on the third string where we're picking every note. And then we're jumping over to the string skipping, the first string, and grabbing that and plucking it with your finger. So we're picking all three notes on the third string with the pick. And then the first string, we did that. I think it was something to that effect. Okay, we're going to do that same idea, but we're going to apply it we're adding a few more elements in there. Okay, so example four here is back to your G7 sound. Okay, we're gonna pick string four at the seventh fret, seven, eight, nine, really quick with your uh, pick going down, up, down, up. And then the, uh, yeah, fingers will be one, two, three. And then grab the second string eighth fret with your middle finger on your left hand. Now, those are always intervals of a major or minor six that we're going to end with, all right? And then we're going to pluck that last note with your middle finger or your ring finger, if you like, okay? Okay, then we're just going just gonna to move back two frets and do the exact same lick, five, six, seven, and then move your middle finger over to the second string quickly. Grab that with your middle finger on your right hand. Okay. And then the third one. Well, actually, let's try those first two. So it's a triplet. It goes two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay. And then the next one, we're going to move back to the third fret. Do your little three note row, chromatic row. And then we're gonna play the five on the second string with your pinky, okay? So we got a minor six right there. Minor six interval there. That's a major six where you play it with your pinky. And then we're gonna move that back two frets and play the exact same lick. Okay, so it's kind of neat on the Fourth string, you're doing. Okay. The important thing is not the first two notes, but it's the last two notes of every four that we're playing. Those are your target notes. Those are your intervals of a six. See how that leaves you kind of hanging? You want to hear the G. the next part is. See how it kind of resolves to the G there? So we're going to go. And then the next lick, we're not going to do the fast picking uh, with the pick. We're going to do a little one finger slide. Kind of the way we ended the last four notes of example one and bar two of example one. Okay, that sounds very kind of country bluegrass. We're going to do that one finger slide. Grab the fourth string with your middle finger. So you could play all this with a pick, but you don't have that snappy little funky sound that you get when you pluck with your finger. And then the third fret sixth string with your middle finger. And then grab the second and third string with your two fingers together. Okay, look at that at the end. Almost everything in there is a G chord, except for the first fret. That's a B flat note. We slide immediately up to the major third, the B, okay? Like we do in the blues, if you're doing the blues in G. You know, B.B. King or Clapton would do something like that. They play the minor third with a hammer on to the major third. Okay, we're doing that here. We're going minor third to major third. Open fourth string is the D note. That's the fifth of the G chord. And then your third fret sixth string is your G. That's the root. 
And then while that's ringing, we pluck the third and second string open. That's your G string and your B. That's the root and the major third. Okay, so right away it ends, it resolves on G. So we got it. One more time. And then we go up to the G minor pentatonic area. Okay, I'm gonna bar that third fret, second and third string with your index, pluck those two together with your ring and middle finger. So now we're picking two strings same time with your fingers. See, it gets a little more snappy sound when you pluck with your fingers. Kind of the way Mark Knopfler plays Money for Nothing. If you play Money for Nothing with a pick, you might have the notes right, but just something doesn't sound right because you're not using your fingers. Okay, if I play these together with a pick, it sounds great, but it doesn't sound like this. You hear the difference? When you pluck with your fingers, you're plucking the strings up, and when you're letting go, the string snaps back and slaps against the upper frets here. And that's where you get that snappy sound. It's like bass players that do a lot of slapping. That cool sound they get is because they're yanking the strings. You get that funky sound when you pluck the string out and let it slap back against the frets. Okay. Then we play the fifth fret. So those the first two are the third fret, second and third string. Then the fifth fret on string four. And then lie your third finger down on the same two strings, but at the fifth fret. Okay, so again, we're anticipating having to go from the fourth string to the third and second together. So what I do is you don't hop your finger, because no matter how quickly you hop your finger, people, it's going to always sound a little choppy. If you roll your finger, don't ever lose contact with the uh, strings or the frets at this particular lick. See how I play this? Watch my left hand fingers. So I just let it fall down. Let me switch over this way. Watch. So I just let it fall down. And then the next lick is the third fret again, second and third string, but you immediately hammer your middle finger onto that fourth fret, third string. Okay. So we want this. So that last part is not, okay? That doesn't sound bad, but this particular example is this. So you want, and then the fifth fret, string four. Okay, and then that, it starts out not really in the G chord. But right there, that ends up being the fifth and the major third and then the root. Like a little F shape chord there, a little triad, right? And then we got the repeating part. The last three notes are the same as the first three notes of example four, which your pickup bar. See, now maybe just food for thought, people. How about try to take that lick and make it sound like a C7? Remember how we did example one and then example two was just moving up five frets, playing almost the same thing? Right? Then C7, I move up and I play exactly the same lick in bar one of the G7, five frets higher. Okay, it sounds like C. What if you do that here? You got the G7. But then we got some open strings. So the open strings are kind of hard to negotiate if we're moving it to a 
transposing it to a different chord or a different key. Okay. So you got to kind of, maybe we'll have to change that last lick a little bit. So what if we, the first bunch of notes though, the first four licks, no open strings. So we can move everything up five frets. So if I start on the 12th fret, maybe I'll just fudge it and go. There we go. One more time. There we go. See, I'm just kind of making this up on the spot with you people. I'm just transposing it on the fly. Up. See, all I do is I'm just going to let that last note ring. Or I could even do that. Be a little too complicated maybe we'll just keep it simple and just go and just let it ring for two beats <coughs> excuse me and then that last lick you can totally do five frets up five frets up become c okay let's try that with a metronome and then we'll start wrapping it up everybody so let's try it at 60, okay? Two, and that's a triplet. Four, I'm gonna come in on the fourth beat. Three. If we do the up five frets, three. There you go. Okay, let's try it up at 90. Two, three, four. One, two, three. Actually, sorry, wrong fret. One, two, three. Okay, how about that one feels for me like I could go a little quicker without sound too messy or without having to do a lot of practice. Uh, let me just read this comment real quick. Craig's saying, I have to miss next Wednesday night. Do I find that lesson on Guitar Tricks website or go to YouTube? Well, Craig, you're a Guitar Tricks member. So if you go in the forum of Guitar Tricks, I always post the link for that class, like next Wednesday class i'll post the link for next wednesday's class in the my for in the forum on guitar tricks under my name way at the bottom okay i do that every week so that way any guitar tricks members can go find some of the past videos easily or you can just go on guitar tricks youtube channel and search for next week will be called uh sweet picking number one of two um, next and look for next week's date, the 7th of February. There you go. Cool, Craig. All right, let's try it at 120 and we're almost done. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Okay, there you go. 
there you go, people. So a lot to chew on there. Some fun stuff, all right? So everybody have a great night. Keep working. Try to incorporate some of these licks into your own style, your own plan. Take them for what they are and uh, enjoy. Next week, we'll be shifting gears into the sweet picking, sweet picking, economy picking uh, realm. And we'll have some fun with that a little bit. All right, everyone have a good night. King 50. All right, we'll see you at your lesson on Friday. Steve, cool. Craig, all right, cool. Kryle, right on. You're very welcome. Second Chance Band in Connecticut. Thank you for watching, Marianne. Appreciate it. Kenneth D., all right, good deal. Thank you. You're welcome. David Carlton, all right. Nice ending on a third. Right on. Glad you like that, Dave. Zane, all right, cool. Appreciate it. Everyone being here. Yep. Cool. All right. Gracias, Alex. All right. Cool. Richard. All right. Everyone have a great night, man. Important thing is don't ever give up playing guitar. It's a fun hobby. It's fun. If you want to take it further than that, it's a great way to communicate with other musicians and jam with people. So just have fun with it. Glad I'm helping everyone out. I love helping other students and other friends uh, get better on guitar. Other people wanting to get better. So, all right. Be good, everyone. Peace. Keep them fingers flying. We'll see you next Wednesday. Bye.